All right, today we're going to be covering installing the piston and rod assembly into the block. Now I really hope if you have original rods that you are not doing this right now and you did this during disassembly but because I have new 12 valve rods for this engine I'm just going to mark them for the cylinders that I'm going to put them in. It doesn't actually matter but I want to make sure that that rod stays in the same cylinder for the rest of its life. All right, now here's the most important part is clocking the piston rings. The top two are compression rings, the bottom is an oil ring. The top two need to be 180 degrees off along the skirt side and then the bottom oil ring, I clock as far away from the top compression ring gap as I can. I do offset these just a little bit on the skirt, but the biggest thing that I was taught is you don't want any of the openings over the wrist pin. So 180 degrees off for the top two and then the oil ring a little bit clocked off of the top ring. All right, this is a fixed ring compressor, which means it is specific for the bore of my engine. This is a 4020 size ring compressor. It's tapered, so all you have to do is work the rings in there with your fingers. And if you can do that all by hand with your fingers, you won't break any rings. Now, when you use this to install them, push on that ring compressor pretty hard and then use the rubber mallet to push or gently tap the pistons in. And if you do that, you won't break any rings using clean engine oil to lube the cylinder walls and the rings of these. Now, as you can see, I'm doing cylinder one, three, and four. Probably could have done number six too, but I was just trying to do a couple at a time to where the crankshaft was lined up properly. Then I installed the caps. Now I installed the bearings after I installed the rods into the cylinder, just so I didn't knock them out. Uh, they're the same procedures, the mains line up the tangs. The part numbers are actually the same for upper and lower. Make sure you lube the surface of it going to the crankshaft. And then I install the caps and then I torque them to the initial spec of 22 foot pounds. Now, please remember these are ARP bolts. So the specification may not be the same as what you would see in a stock Cummins engine for the rod caps. Now, as you can see, I rotated the crankshaft and I'm now installing cylinder two and I'm going to install cylinder five and then I will rotate it over again and install cylinder six. Again, if you try to install all of these at once, you're going to run into a problem. The 22 foot pounds torque spec. And once all of these are in, then you can proceed with the final specification. I rolled this engine over for that. So you can see I'm finishing up number six here. Uh, the rod bolts are lubed in engine oil, by the way. That's something I did forget to mention. It is helpful to have someone push those in for you, but... All right, so the first specification is 22 foot-pounds. The next specification is 44 foot-pounds. And the last specification is 95 foot-pounds. Again, these are ARP bolts. 